Hey there film shooters, welcome back to Project Analog Photography. In today's tutorial, I will be explaining the process of removing and recoding the rear cone found on the back of a Hasselblad lens, in this case my 80mm f2.8 CF. For some reason over time, this part can develop these ugly hard white deposits. I hope you enjoy this video and please consider visiting my website, projectanalogphotography.com and subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of my future uploads. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now before getting started, be sure to set the lens to infinity. And you are also going to need a quality double zero Phillips screwdriver for this repair, ideally one with a magnetic tip, as the screws we'll be dealing with are quite small. Now before we loosen anything, we have to uncock the leaf shutter, which is as simple as pushing down on this little lever found here. Now here's a close up in case you missed it. You can tell it is uncocked when the dot is no longer aligned with the slot. Now start removing all eight Phillips screws found around the perimeter of the lens. Don't worry, these screws are all the same size, just find a safe spot to put them so you don't lose them. After the eight Phillips screws have been removed, simply lift the rear bayonet off of the lens. From this point forward, we can set the lens to the side. Taking a closer look at the rear bayonet though, we see that the rear cone is attached to the other side and is held in with four more Phillips screws. Simply remove these and the cone will release. It is important to note that there is a ring of oil found around the perimeter of the bayonet on this side, so try not to touch this oil as it protects the lens from dust ingress. As you can see here, we now have the rear cone free from the bayonet. Folks online typically say this part's made out of some kind of alloy or magnesium, which is actually wrong. The rear cone is in fact made of some kind of injection molded plastic, likely ABS, and has a coating on it that is either metallic based or metallic impregnated, which is since oxidized, which is what we need to remove. The bayonet is fine, however we could see evidence of the oxidation depositing itself onto the surface, which we will clean a little bit later. Try not to touch the cocking armature and indexing slides on the side as these have heavy grease applied to them and we want to keep that on there. To clean the rear cone, we're going to apply lye, which is found in Easy Off Oven Cleaner. The reason we want to use lye is it can strip paint and oxidation without harming the plastic. Do not use acetone or other harsh solvents on the rear cone. While wearing gloves, apply a generous amount of Easy Off and place the cone into a plastic bag. This will prevent the Easy Off from drying out and will allow the cleaner to dissolve the paint and oxidation over several minutes. After several minutes has passed, grab a Q-tip and rub the surface to break free any remaining residues off the surface. Then wash under warm water with soap. The cone is now free of the old paint and oxidation. You can see evidence of the oxidation that occurred, but the surface is now smooth and contains no residue. Use a matte black, plastic safe paint and allow to cure for 24 hours. This is the result. Now to clean the bayonet, just wet a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and scrub away. Be sure to watch out for the ring of oil I mentioned earlier. Once the surface is reasonably clean, place the rear cone into its original orientation Now screw the four Phillips screws removed from earlier. Do not over tighten these screws as the ABS is soft plastic and could crack. Just get it snug enough to retain the cone. Looks good. 
Now on to the next step. Now let's take a closer look at the back of the lens. As you can see, here is the cocking armature, and there are the two slots for the indexing rods on the bayonet mount. Here's a closer look. You can try to put the bayonet on, but if it does not drop in, it is likely due to the cocking armature not aligning to the female end on the lens. To fix this, all you need to do is pull down on the shutter release and just twist the armature to the correct orientation. This is covered in grease, so touch this as little as possible. Alright, sweet, we are now in the home stretch. Just drop the bayonet in and screw in the 8 screws from earlier. You can double check your work by making sure that the lens properly hits the infinity and minimum focusing distance stops properly. The last step is to recock the shutter on the lens so you don't jam it trying to put it back on the camera. This can be done with a penny or a flathead screwdriver for example. I'm using a penny in this case. Don't forget to check to make sure the shutter works by pressing down on the shutter release. Recock it again before putting the lens onto the camera. Thanks again for watching this video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll be making more videos with this camera as well as others, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, and drop a comment down below of what else you'd like to see me upload next. On my website, projectanalogphotography.com, I'll be uploading anything from camera and film emulsion reviews, tutorials, and sharing some photos from some of my photo walks. With all that said, get out there and shoot more film.